Good evening. Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education budget work session, Wednesday, January 22nd, 2020. Do I have a, a motion to go into closed session? I move to pursue to the general provisions of Article 3-305 and 3-104. The Board of Education of Queen Anne's County should meet in closed session and consider matters that relate to negotiations to discuss the performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this body has jurisdiction and to perform administrative function, to consult with staff or other individuals about pending or potential litigation. Do I have a second? I have a motion and a second. Any questions and comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to go into closed session. All those in favor, raise your hand, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. We will be back soon. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you all. And we're back. Thank you so much. Mr. Fister, we had a conversation about uh, our budget. So, uh, before you, board members, is a revised non-school summary, the blue form. Um, Mr. Paluski and I went through and, and made some additional cuts, uh, mainly to his areas. Um, but we're getting down to where we're going to make some serious considerations as to whether we want to, you know, have this go forward as part of the superintendent's presentation. So we can certainly go through this line by line and decide whether we want to keep it or cut it. Um, and then once we finish this document, we'll go back to the green document, which is the school-based one, and make those necessary cuts there because it is getting down to crunch time where we have to make some final decisions to um, come up with a budget that we want to propose to uh, county commissioners. I see that in this present, this new document, You've included the health services coordinator. Yes. And that's what we're referring to this job as? Yes. At this point? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we, we made some cuts um, and included that one because we had to. to. Mm -hmm. So on, on page one, um, the, the reorg of the public information office is still there. Oh, I want to ask you, when we do this, can you specify when something is required, required by law or something? You sure. Know, that we, you know, new requirement Absolutely. comes in. Sure. So we can just note that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Um, communication office reorg. Uh, no positions, but a cost of forty-six thousand five seventy-nine. Like I said, we can we can go through this and then come back to it, or we can talk about it each particular line and whether you want it to go forward or whether you want it to. Yeah. How about um, in light of time, if we just you know <laughs> go through it, but if there and we note if there is something that's required. And if you have any questions, just stop us. Well, I guess on the finance office, I'm not to say it would be nice, but with everything looking at it as a big picture, that's mm -hmm. something I certainly want to put on thin ice. Mm -hmm. and, and when you say there's no FTE, you're just talking about the position that's sitting empty. It's just going to be upgraded for the amount of money. There, because there are two positions currently in that office, and so there would remain two positions, but we would re, um, we would um, repurpose them and keep our contract with Mr. White. Well, this the way I am proposing, we would not keep our contractor. Can, yeah. Right. Okay. He's thirty-six thousand. Right? That's the contract for the year. Yes. Social studies coordinator. I'm sorry, the budget cost is, does that include benefits at 46? Yes. Well, that's the whole cost of that position? No, the whole cost of the reorg. So basically, in, in, in Dr. Kane's terms, the, uh, the upgrade of those positions, including benefits, would cost us $46,000 because we would net, the, we net everything out. So it's 46,000, the request is 46,000 more, more than is currently paid for the two current positions. Okay. And we're paying 30, and, but, but we would drop the 36 contract. Correct. But the 36 contract is being paid Eight. by the vacant salary Position. that's already budgeted. Correct. So there isn't a $10,000, it's not $10,000 difference. That's where you were going. The 46 minus the 36 that we would drop. 46 is the true cost up without having Mr. White continue. Okay. <clears throat> um, Social studies supervisor of social studies and math um, has been um, deleted. The EL teacher remains. The increasing enrollment. The athletic director reorganization remains. And is that a requirement then, an EL teacher, based on? The requirement, no. Need, it's need, yes. need. Severe need. 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 Need.
It's a very well, it's a need, need, but it's, it's not. Wait. It's not like the nurse that we're going to have to have. Correct. You, when you say requirement, are you basically saying statutory law? That it's required by statute that we have That's this. the way I understood you. Okay. What is I, I would agree with that, but, but the other thing we need to know is this, is this like our standard of the number of kids we have under each circumstance when you were getting more than that, that it would be. So we have EL teachers now, right. five. Mm -hmm. Our enrollment is increasing, so the need has increased, and so, so the along is, in, is enough to make it another teacher increased by 28 percent over the last three years, um, and we currently have five. So we wanted to add a sixth teacher. to help us with the caseload. Have we also thought about some of our current teachers getting their EL certification? I mean, is that not also an option? Yeah, it's not going to, if, if we do, and like that's always means. right, it's not, it's not going I'm to. I'm just asking the question. And it's not going to save dollars because if they come out of their current position to an EL position, it's still, you know, a new position sure. would still be needed. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Because we I'm already have five wondering. teachers there. But that's wondering. always, yeah, that's always. Helpful. Uh, exactly. What's Helpful. the number in a class for these? It's not a class. It's not really a class. It's somebody. It's a caseload. It's a caseload. A caseload number. Okay. Yeah. We can, um, in our weekly board report, I could reshare the case board presentation. Yeah. And the board presentation that Ms. Wolbert had done on ELL and the growing population. That was in September, wasn't it? Right. Um, it was October, recent. A couple of, just maybe December. Maybe just December. talking about the, the access testing, which is going on right now for ELs. Okay. And it did have the all of our current enrollment. Yeah. Okay. So I remember that. I would be happy to share that. We can is that a? But is there a state standard for EL number of cases kind of thing? That Not in the same way Not that enough. they have proposed that legislation for um, psychologists. Mm -hmm. Remember? Right. So no, not Which like really that. Just really unreasonable mm -hmm. too. I know. <laughs> we okay. don't have that either. Thank you. <laughs> um, from EL down to athletics, the athletics reorganization. Um, one additional position there for forty-two thousand dollars is the net cost of that reorg. Did you want to say something about that, Mrs. Smith? I just, you know, I know we're still going to keep in position how we are now with a teacher, athletic director at each school. There's two different models. Mm -hmm. The model at Ken Allen High School is the assistant principal is the athletic director, along with the assistant principal. I can tell you that down there, the majority of his time is spent dealing with athletics, not with instruction. Um, at Queen Anne's High School, we tried that model. It wasn't the greatest model up there. Mm -hmm. We went to another model where we had a teacher come in for um, teaches two classes, uh, one class for planning, and then the other part for uh, AD. Um, I can tell you that person basically comes in every day at 6.30 and they're not leaving until nine o'clock every night. Um, responsible for all the athletics, all, you know, same thing as Ken Island. The reason that I put it in for this year was we have some people that are retiring at um, Queen Anne's County High School. Uh, the secretary will be retiring there. So instead of replacing the secretary, you would you know, <coughs> use that salary to then go over to the full-time 11-month AD person. Either way, we're going to have to hire somebody. I mean, you either have the secretary um, assisting or you have the 11 month employee um, that is the AD and then looking down the road the same thing could occur down to Ken Allen High School with the way the years are played out in the retirement situation so if we were to do something the bottom line is now will be the time to do it with the retirement going in. But the 42 is that taking off the salary of the thing or is that just 42 for all that is dollar yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that's a difference of a secretary retiring and hiring a full full athletic director. The difference will be that forty two. But the individual that is filling, that is the teacher and the AD, is that then becomes a full time teacher? Is that what you're saying? It what would happens? be an eleven month position. And then for you, the teaching position, no, we, we, no, 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 we, the teaching should, position will be totally separate. And what we've tried to do, we've looked at the, the schedule there. The, the class load there is is too much for one teacher to come in we've also tried to hire somebody on a, like a part-time basis to come in help teach a class and we, we're not we didn't have any success anybody come in and wanted to do one class and leave 
Um, I understand that the individual, it's an individual issue, not a capability. I mean, the individual who's doing this teaches some classes yes. and also fills AD. When you bring in the AD, what is the... They, they would be responsible for athletics the whole entire right. year. So the teacher is then going to get another couple classes? The yeah. teacher could assume more classes, Teacher yes. position. Yes. Yeah. Which would open up some different categories so for So then that. where the 42 just comes from a secre uh, secretary's salary? That's where the 42 comes from. The difference? From. The, difference the difference of it, yes. They say the secretary. hire an 11 month athletic director oh, and okay. not replace the secretary, so the net difference between the two is $42,000. So this, what is the secretary's getting paid about? So you know what this position is cost? 35000 Plus benefits. benefits. This includes the benefit. In an 11-month model, like I said, you're seeing most school systems in the metropolitan area going to that and Southern Maryland. On the eastern shore, you'll find a, a hodgepodge from 11-month to, you know, the teacher teaching two classes, having some. The ones that I've spoke to that are doing it that way really – I'll say this, they're, every one of them said their classroom instruction suffers because they're inundated with parents with athletic issues. And what districts generally, you know, have to do is sort of phase, phase it in. Um, because there was one point when it was a teacher, they just were missing most of that last period of class because they were traveling. And so we started to phase. And so, okay, you teach three classes uh, or, or two classes, you get a planning period and you're going that third period um, and then down to one class as they go along. So until it's a full-time AD. Do you think that it's possible to get a staff member to, at this salary? Yes. It's not that salary. It's that salary plus the difference of a secretary. It's 77000 Mm -hmm. 35. The same as it looks like a first year, it looks like a teacher, average teacher salary. Would, yes. Mm -hmm. 72 or whatever you want to use. That's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is. It's a lot of work. So but again, you take in the instructional piece out of it, yeah. and they're yeah. concentrating just on the athletic piece with all of the requirements put into that. We have, I, I always say this kind of my motto we're really good at curriculum and instruction, where we end up having issues. And are in the other areas, you know, because we're so spread thin on those types of areas that there will be something that occurs, you know, that is going to be a, a lawsuit or something like that. <clears throat> so will this athletic director also be helping with administration of the building, like doing lunch duty or? I think they could fill in with that. The other part to that is you move. really, yes, they're still a certified teacher. They're just an 11-month employee. But the other thing that we were looking at also was, you really need somebody to oversee all the clubs, um, True. you know, get control of that area of where all the stipends are going for the, the club area. Um, you know, right now we require a, um, a study hall. So okay, you have one gym at Queens County High School. So that you have freshmen, JV, varsity boys basketball. Then you got girls JV and varsity. So. That time frame that students are after school is pretty long. Some of them don't go home, but they still have to be supervised. So we have a study hall set up. You know, there's constantly, you have late buses going on. It, it's, it's a whole different world once those, that bell goes off and after school activities start. So this athletic director would coordinate all of that. Okay. And we, we've always had a good partnership with Parks and Rec, but they use our facilities evenings and weekends and now with the turf field, I guess, with these tournaments and stuff, mm -hmm. is the AD, got, did we, for a quote of a better word, get any plus revenue on some of this stuff? No, because th those... I mean, well, I think it's, it's taxpayers' money, so I have no problem using it, but does it, it costs us to, make, to keep an eye on all this stuff. So we will get money from Hogan's Lacrosse Tournament mm -hmm. each year for that. Um, that money goes to... Um, the athletic fund at each high school, and then also if we if they have extra revenue generated, we can say we want to go to this particular club. Um, but as far as like the rental and the usage of that, that's going to fall on Parks and Rec. Now we like we have a meeting this Friday to go over all of our spring sports. Mm -hmm. So it'd be myself, both athletic directors, um, and Parks and Rec to go over that. But for the most part, it, that is going to be you know Parks and Rec handling that. Um, I just wonder how Mr. Um, Hardy, though, just does any 
assistant principal work. Well, I know he's the strength. I mean, that's well, how I pick up kids at a basketball yeah. game and throw them out. I mean, the guy is really good at controlling kids, so he's that kind of a, mm -hmm. AP. But otherwise, and, it's all athletics. And like I said, you looking down in the future, the transition could be the same right. with that particular place there because you're looking at somebody retiring also. Um, we're very fortunate Mr. Harding is very strong in what he does, but again, looking at the consumption of what he's doing instructionally, first discipline, and then also athletics, you know, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. He's going to wear out. He's, yeah. God bless him. Uh, does this salary encompass all the time he's putting in after work? Like I know he's at the Saturday wrestling tournaments, he's at the evening basketball games, he's... Yes. He's not getting extra money for all... He, do, he gets money for that, it's a $10,000 stipend. Okay. But by the time you yeah. coordinate all that into there... Yeah, look well, at the hours. You know, it's... Taxes. Mm -hmm. That's not, is that thrown in here? This no, okay. it, well, I'm yeah. sorry. It's in when netted in that. Okay, yeah. great, thank you. Health services required <laughs> as your coordinator of health services. Um, as we talked about, you know, this position is no longer going to be funded by the health department starting next year, starting now. Uh, and we're uh, waiting on uh, some clarification on job description, get that posted, and um, but then this will become a new position uh, for next year's budget at a cost of $100,000. This year's cost, whatever we spend between now and June 30, it's been covered by $50,000 that the health department has given us. Up to this June. Awesome, awesome. Correct. Yeah. Well, my only feeling is, and you say it's required, I want, next time we talk with the commissioners, <laughs> I want to talk about this because we're an educational business. We have nurses in 14 schools, but then to oversee it as educational thing, I think it should be more in the health department's domain than ours. And I don't know. The state if, health if, department if, should be taking should be overseeing. And this. it might fall on deaf ears, but I think it needs to be brought up loud and clear that I don't think we should be having a coordinator of health services, that they sh that should be assigned to the health department. Does it correct? Not that we, not that we, we do a good job education, this but I think we've got we to draw the line somewhere, and I just think that's getting out of hand. This, this coordinator, that who, he or she, who she, whoever it is, their license covers those 14 nurses. Is that correct? It covers the nurses who are not currently RNs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think we only have one or two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I tried to capture that in that little impact. There's a typo, critical, but. Um, Is 100,000 something we're going to be held with a high? They gave us 50 for six months, so we're just basing it 100 for a year. We have to wait until the applicants come in, and it could alter it a little bit. Well, there's a reason they don't know. There's a reason the state don't want to hire one. <laughs> well, and, and then we have to talk about the cost of I insurance. Believe, but, you know, for six months we had difficulty filling an HR person mm -hmm. that would, that's in mm -hmm. the educational system. Mm -hmm. Now yep. all of a sudden we're going to go out and try to fill, do a health care professional. And I think we're... I, I don't think it's going to be easy. Well, no. and, and we have to look at the Besides, insurance on I mean, it. You don't know anything about health. Well, are you going to get some be, help? Be, yeah, they are going to help us, but I say I don't believe it's going to be easy because it hasn't been easy for them. Oh, so yeah. they've already told us that. There's so it's not going to be easy for us either. And I just think we, I mean, we talked to commissioners at some point, I think, before this, and at the budget we'll talk to them, mm -hmm. but I think we need to make them well aware. I mean, my view is I don't want any parts of it. I'd I'm like not saying know. I have to. Take right. it, but I right. don't want any parts of it. Is that what you referring to a liability? I, I want to know what the MAVE insurance is going to, how this is covered. Since it's now under our jurisprudence, it's not under the health department any longer. What's the increased cost in our health insur our insurance to cover this coordinator? I mean, we have to have a lot. We have to have a $2 million liability waiver. Are there counties, counties that... That actually I would like to know what they, they do for so insurance. insurance. When I talk to somebody that's in that field, it's it's. I'm not saying 50-50, but there's models it, in both sides. Exactly. So it's not. It's it, not. That's new. what we tried to say last time. It's not unheard of. It, it, there are many districts. But it's something do it. I like. I, I would, point well taken. We got. We can that. agree on something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it, it got dropped on our lap. That's just how. I mean, point. Yeah, but if we don't sit there and say something to it again, you know. And we're saying it loud and clear right now. And I just want to know what the cost is going to be on our insurance side, too, because there's definitely going to be an increase. We'll get Has to for this point. position alone. Um, I see $3 million. Easy. $3 million waiver, a liability waiver, absolutely. 
transportation, a bus driver, due to the increased special needs transportation um, uh, request of one for next year. Is that a 180 day employee or a 10 month employee? Or 12, I mean, it's the same really. They're 180 days, they drive every day. The, the children are in school, school, 180 days. But I mean, doesn't some special ed go more than 180 days? Yes, but that would, they would handle that through extra, extra time. Okay. Not part of their base salary. Maintenance and electrician? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, one, How many times? Seven years ago, you're going to Hey, don't ask, don't get, right? Exactly. Okay. I think we do a good job. I think from talking to Sid, we've got some very qualified people that seem to be on their Thank second goodness. career willing to work here that seem to be pretty, yeah. pretty tough. I mean, we were lucky when the economy tanked and people mm -hmm. were looking for that stable income. He must be nice to work for. <laughs> That's why I didn't put us too close together. It's so red. Get his face. Carpenter locksmith. Look at that. And the technology has been deleted from the last time. How are we going to get away with that when technology is just increasing? Well, because we are looking at, that was for stipends. That was for stipends. Right, okay. not a position. Okay. Mm -hmm. Moving on, uh, finance additional pay, that's been stricken. The curriculum and instruction, um, Mr. Pluse can talk to this, but I, I hope to do a good job. What we're doing is currently is 148,000. We're asking, remember that whole laundry list that's below that's now crossed out, 38,000 to address that on a priority basis. Uh, some of those needs that are crossed out is where that $38,000 came from. Um, some of that is dependent on textbook adoption and all of that kind of stuff and then where we are with certain curriculum needs, but that would just be the $38,000 add to that line. But then in addition to that, the 10,500 to uh, increase curriculum rank stipends from 2150 to 2300 uh, from $23. And then we've crossed out all of the individual or most of the individual curriculum writing assignments. Some of this will still occur with that $38,000. And then the teacher leadership development stipend that is recommended to remain to provide support for the mentors with their mentees of 30,000. And then uh, the other two, English and early childhood, correct and writing stipends, again, encompass part of that 38,000. Discussion on those. So the 38,000, okay, all right. So we just pared it all back yeah. and, and reduced it within, and you can see what the priorities are with, within, you know, what has been requested, but it's been mm -hmm. completely pared back. And what was strike, stricken was much more than $38,000. Yeah, I guess this is some of the stuff that you're, Supervisors will have to pick up the job of yeah, curriculum job. writing themselves. Okay. They, they, yeah, they'll they'll do it anyways. I mean, they they've got to manage it, and um, you know they're overseeing all facets of it. Um, so, I mean, who's picking up the writing of the curriculum then? Well, in in some cases, if if we've got to cut back, let's say you know they're proposing four courses. And if, if there's not funds to be able to run four courses or to get the people to do it, then we'll just have to cut that back. Um, but the big thing there, uh, as, as mentioned, that 10-5, um, certainly to advocate for, for my, the supervisors that, and I think we had this discussion the last time, is that they're, they're having a hard time finding people you know, that want to come, you know, a teacher that is 21.50 and by the time in the summer and they're paying child care, they're, they're, they're not making much money. So any movement we could make to increase that individual stipend dollar would be greatly appreciated. Well, under your health line, that's a required, correct? That's a new house bill requirement. Sure. And so of that 38, we'll be able to pick that up. Mrs. Morissette, not. We just won't be able to have as many writers as an example. So we've been able to cut that back, but that's still part of the additional ask of the 38. Which one are you talking about, Michelle? Health, under yeah. curriculum and instruction. And who's writing that? Your, so your nursing be, staff or your? So those will be classroom teachers. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have health background? Absolutely. Okay. Certified Nutrition. Certified Nutrition. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Certified Thank you. health teacher. Sure. Yeah. The minimum wage increase of $100,000. The middle of page five, um, that's a requirement. Um, again, the $100,000 is based on uh, what we spent this year, which was every bit of that $100,000. Um, as we move forward. And the minimum wage is going from what to what this year? 10, 10 to 11. 
10 to 11, and it goes from well, 11 January to 11. 50, 11.50. By 2025, it goes to $15 an hour. We're looking at close to a 10% increase a year. Uh -huh. That's about. Yes, sir. It's 11.50 next year. Yeah. No. I have January 1. Somewhere. January 1. Next yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, stipends others. Uh, we eliminated the art scene stipend. Uh, the media, again, this is the transition from the old Alexandria system to the new Destiny Library Manager. So there's some required, and I'll use the term required, um, stipends. Program. Otherwise, we won't be able to implement the new system with fidelity, and the media assistance would, you know, be lost. I guess with trying to implement a new system. So that one's a requirement to the, um, some degree. Service learning coordinator. Again, this has just been one of those unbudgeted items. It's only three thousand dollars, so we decided to leave that in. The teacher leadership development substitutes to 10200 We talked about this at length last time. This is where the sub we would put substitutes in schools to allow the existing young teachers to partner up with more experienced teachers. So we would need a substitute for the classroom for them to leave their teaching duties and then be mentored by um, experienced teachers. And that hasn't been done in the past? Why isn't that coming well, under substitutes? We, we did, but we had to cut it. And so principals have been asking again this year, like every time we see every them. Time. So that's why we're requesting to get it back in there. Sorry, I'm sorry. I was just wondering why it just wasn't under subs. It, under it could be, but I just decided not to create one whole section for substitutes, okay. but stipends or other. Okay. I see here you, you're, you've cut fine arts in the art scene, and you cut it again for the additional pro panels. Can't we you split the difference there? And put two thousand back in between the two. So Mr. Um, Paluski feels like he can manage those oh. within his budget. We can manage that within the larger um, allocation that we currently have. Okay. So I think we'll be okay. Okay. Certainly you know, want to. But the science consumables we can't because they're just the increase in that goes and, up. And, and that's been part right. of the. You remember we adopted the elementary <laughs> science right. a, a few years back. That has been now a reoccurring cost. And as you can see within the, that there's not much in my line item to run a whole no. district on 42,000. So, uh, and, and that is certainly, you know, a requirement. It's certainly a tested area. So they can't um, do science if they don't have the. And it's been, yeah, it's, it's, it's part of the adopted program. Particles to do it What's with? the G and T? You just explain that one, that gift and talent. And sure. That. Our gift and talented program. And no um, one not required, required to do that. We, we actually are. Um, there is a, a matter of fact, there's a new Comar requirement really? on your, yes. Okay. And um, this is an area that needs uh, some attention that has not received attention um, in the past. So we've been working on revamping our gifted and talented program and what we're able to offer. So this is, this is very, very bare bones um, to at least get some movement in that area to start upgrading the materials, um, the approach that we use. Um, so we, we've been piloting it at a, at a few schools, but that is a very, that is a very, very. What is Kumar requiring on that? I, I didn't I don't remember that. Sure, I can. We can. I know in public schools, we are required to do, sure. you know, some of the gap, close the gaps and stuff like that. But right. the GT's always been hurting from, well, not being given the attention, like you Right, said. and so recognizing that, Comar, the legislation requires us to have a gifted and talented program to provide services to those students. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'll be happy to, I can put that in my weekly board report as well, Captain Kelly. Yeah, just just to summarize the, mm -hmm. the new gift and talented. In fact, we're also working on um, locally to have a gifted, to revise our gifted and talented policy and regulation as a result of Comar. So that's, that's we're working on that behind the scenes as well. But I can give you that. Yeah, because I'm, parents have always been sure. saying this, especially on the island down there, where were we? And I always explain, you know, it's a public school, we're obligated to, to you know, do certain programs and they usually aren't involved in gifted and talented. That's where we did a cut. With I was Sammy just going to say we had our cut. I think 2012 we used right. to have a gift and talent to specialist in every school. And it came out. And there were 12. It came out 13 or 14. Yeah. 13 or it came 14. Out I with believe that big 12, 4 12 million to 14 dollar cut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. of those folks that, that got cut. Yes. And, yeah. and there went a large portion of services. And, well. and a big, big backlash from the public on that one, but we had to do it, I remember. 
Okay, great. I'm glad I can um, tell Next them. thing that has stayed but was substantially reduced, um, the $141,000 for English has been reduced to $61,000 to take care of the Pearson consumables and licenses. 40000 of this request has been moved to licenses below, and then if you recall, I had a $40,000 duplicate in there for the Wonders program, so that's why that's down to sixty one. but you'll see another forty come back a little bit later. It just, uh, and again, that's a requirement. Yes, a requirement because the funds that we've been receiving from um, the state and the federal on the Striving Readers Grant over the last four years, this is the last year. So in order to continue that, we'll have to fund that locally. But, it, but you say a requirement. Is, there, is it mandated or is just we think it's a requirement? Well, this is our this is our core program. So this is our core reading program. Is there any other grants to replace that grants that's going out? Unfortunately not. That was, I believe, just about a half a million dollar grant over a four year period, uh, Mr. Smith. The high school program? The licenses for high school mm -hmm. textbook? Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. Down in uh, licenses and software, the curriculum instruction, we talked about the 504 uh, new module being purchased for um, Power School to manage the 504 plans to get us. Uh, keep us out of any compliance issues. Um, so that will be a requirement there. Um, so we can move forward with that um, integration and implementation. As you can see, the rest of the softwares and licenses were um, stricken. Um, 55,000, again, back to the Striving Readers Grant, that's a requirement because that's, again, the READ 180 program that's no longer funded by the grant. It has to be funded by us. Here's the $40,000 that was moved from the MOI for the Hoot and Methlin collections for middle school textbooks as a requirement. And then the Wonders platform, again, as we talked about, this was a five-year contract purchased five years ago. Um, we need to put the $40,000 in here uh, for this purpose, and then as we get a little bit closer working with the supervisors, I'll work with the company, with the supervisor, to see how we can structure that contract that perhaps we could just pay twelve, uh, ten thousand dollars, or eight thousand dollars each year for five years, as opposed to a forty thousand dollar chunk. Because that's what I don't like about that is we forgot about it four years ago, and all of a sudden, well, uh oh, we got to find forty thousand dollars in new money to fund this. Whereas if we had eight, it would stay in the budget, and then we would be taken care of. So this again is a requirement. C&I repair, $6,000 as a requirement. No, is it absolutely necessary? Yes, because we have equipment that we just have no other funds to repair and it's just sitting there not being utilized um, by the um, students. And that's not, that's not in capital? It can't come out of capital? Or is this just a reoccurring cost? This would be a reoccurring, this would be of an operating, I wouldn't think okay. that this would ever qualify for a capital piece. It's, it's not capital equipment, so we wouldn't put it in the capital budget. Gotcha. Yeah, little microscopes, you. kilns, things like that. Right. Um, scrolling on down, everything else, till you get to the Virtual Learning Academy, that's been left intact. The stipends, the online platform access, the office supplies, and the field trips for student learning. That's Why is this extra? Intact. Why is it extra? We have it in the budget last year. Right. No. Last year we put in the budget for um, 1.5 positions, which we did save a couple dollars because we only needed to fill one of them. But this is about in student enrollment now. And remember, we didn't count the students who are enrolled now because we got held up by MSDE and they couldn't be counted in the September 30 enrollment. So that means this coming school year we're going to have to pay for those students. And that's the licensing of the program that they're using. But weren't we going to be offset with students uh, when we can know. count them in our enrollment we'll right. get paid for them but because we weren't allowed to count them in our enrollment on September 30 this year for the FY 21 budget okay. Okay. we yeah we don't have all right I get it yeah, thank you that's just a, we're just lagging a, a year yeah. Yeah. Just so, a so and, and that works like about five thousand dollars a student yeah so then next time we should get our right because yeah. be the program, right? Yeah. The program is going. Um, obviously, MSDE approved the pilot program. We're going to be doing an RFP for the, what, whoever the actual company, the vendor that's going to provide the online program. Um, and so we'll be we'll be working toward that. So we're we're going. 
So we'll, we'll have the students, and we're looking for an increase in the number of students. Um, and so we will have them for the September these, 30 these, enrollment. These 30 will, this 30 will be counted as next year's. Correct, because they'll be they're enrolled by already, September they're, they're, 30. They're safe. Correct. Well, hopefully, we'll, not hopefully have um, Unless we if get we, some we, backlash from MSDE, which I don't anticipate, because we've fulfilled all their requirements. Um, you know, unless we, oh, get, we get something. get backlash from them. I mean, at some point, you know, when I look at these grants that are going out, we're not getting it, and they do this, and they want us to do it, but then don't want to, you know, do I mean, at some point, somebody's got to pay for it. And it, it at, at right some now. point, it's, it's they're going to be enrolled, and we'll get the funding for them, which will fund if, if the If they count right. on September exactly. 30th. Exactly. Exactly. And you feel confident that could happen. I, I don't see why it wouldn't. And the cost per people is about eight. So this... Around about like, 77, 78, so something now, like that. If it's now five, then we'll be so we making right. some money. Well, Correct. No, no, that was well, the, we I really, mean, really, well, that was the part of the plan. The county funding most of it. The state's only going to fund three thousand. The county's going to end up funding five of it. So it's we're still going to be to the county. Yeah, it, effort, it, it, it and it's breaks still out. Dollars. Yeah, it breaks out to be um, about half. Mm -hmm. But but it doesn't 60%. mean we're going to have to put it on a budget item next year. It's not not this amount. No. Should be covered. Yes, yeah. correct. It should pay for itself and some. Correct. With special ed, no reductions there. The 130 for the Midshore Consortium, the 255 for the increase in non-public placements, the $7,000 for mandatory training. So all three of those um, are requirements or mandatory. And we asked this question before, and you gave us the answer. You looked in the consortium, but at the current time, we have no. I would. We have no economic benefit to, right. to talk to them about relieving that. Because right. some of the services we use in such a minimal time, it would not pay for us to have a full-time staff that might only work 10% of the time. And we're probably the biggest one in that group? We are. We are. Yeah. On the non-public placements, mm -hmm. the, the 740, that is what our current budget is? No, ma'am. Our current budget is 485. But we're currently two hundred fifty-five thousand dollars over that amount. So, all things remaining equal, we need this two fifty-five. We'll need it this year Offset. for the transfer, and then if it remains the same, the increase of two fifty-five would then be have a budget based on anticipated expenditures. We're only at two fifty-five over. And that's the over. Over. Yeah, I know. That's the seven forty something. Next year's budget would be seven. Like thinking so about transportation. Okay. okay. I mean, I don't think we have any choice. Okay, thank you. It sounds like it could even go up. Since we're the biggest one in this consortium, I'm sure it's very advantageous to the smaller systems to be into it because economy of scale, and we're not big enough to get it by ourselves. But uh, we're not paying a disproportional part, though. You don't feel. No. Not according to Ms. Smith. According to who? Ms. Smith, that, the special education supervisor, and she's here. actually in charge of the consortium. This Correct. Year. What would be lovely is to have an Eastern Shore special education program and have everybody come to one facility and have all the special ed students taken care of. The consortium could come to one location. So the transportation, just not having the kids and, well, on the road Well, because we have, there's people in Wicomico and Worcester that are taking their students to Baltimore. Why not have it right here on the shore? I mean, think about it, how wonderful that would be. Slow bridge traffic. It, I mean, right now, I mean, I, I, I have this idea in my head, I talked to with Mrs. Morset and Link about it, just how wonderful that would be for the students, the families, that we could centrally locate it, and why not Queen Anne's County? And it would definitely behoove all the lower counties not to have to go all the way to Baltimore, or IU, DuPont, or wherever. And mm -hmm. We could do it here and have all these students having their needs taken care of. Wouldn't that be lovely? That would be lovely. It'd be who the kids and be so good for the kids. It would be absolutely wonderful. And I'm thinking about the kids and the families. Yes. To have yeah. your more high intensive kids. And, and one location, the consortium, instead of going to 30 different schools across five counties or six counties, you know, have one central location. Wouldn't that just be lovely? Okay, I digress. Sorry, thank you. But it would Pipe dreaming. Pipe dreaming. $60,000 for the board certified behavior analyst. I don't know if that's a requirement, but I certainly can say it was critical. Sure. Are we missing that now? Yes. The teachers are dealing with that right now. Down to student support, we cut the um, additional training for PBIS staff for $13,000, and we cut their $2,000 request of MOI down to just an additional $500, as you can see by the note. But neither one of those are required. 
I'm sorry, pop back up the assistive technology for special needs. Is that being absorbed in another area? Yeah, with within Mr. Pelosi. Yeah, we can we can cover that within the license, the current licenses and okay. allocation of what we have. Down the transportation um, man requirement, the the increase for the contract, 163,350. Um, the $91,000 in those various items and inspections and safety trainings, um, again, necessary because we're under budgeted in those areas, required by law, no, um, when it comes to some of that, but the physical exams are required by law, the safety training is required by law, the drug testing is required by law, but it's not required by law to fix your buses, but if you want them on the road, you got to fix them. So I would almost say that would be a requirement for our discussion purposes. Well, but. The, the but you just all said we already already doing that. So what do we have an increase for? If, okay. if you look at the five year trend, mm -hmm. we've always underfunded that area, and we always have to bring from another place to put into there. Yep. Plus, um, the state uh, just also approved where we're going to have to double the amount of drug and alcohol testing we're doing of bus drivers. So we did not have that in the budget either. Um, and that just came to uh, fruition uh, this this month. And if you recall, Captain Kelly, last year we were short $545,000 in this capital last year. This okay. is an attempt to help stabilize that. Again, part of that, the, the drivers for the non-public transportation, as we have more uh, students going to the other side, uh, the overtime costs are going up. So again, this is to help offset those negatives. Um, this, this, this is much of a special ed cost as anything. Yeah, but it has to be charged to student transportation. I understand, but yeah. I mean, uh, the Kent Island after school bus. Um, there was a discussion point there of whether we want to move that forward. That's certainly not a requirement, but equity. Equity. It's equity. Right. We did that years ago. We cut it out, and it was a mess. And again, with the operations and the maintenance, two issues on the final page nine. Uh, again, getting into the requirement, no, but. Uh, we are historically, as Mr. Pender said, underfunded in these areas, um, and this is an attempt to uh, stabilize those budgets. And then, as I talked, we raised uh, we raised that last year too, right, for the custodial supplies because of the green <coughs> issue. Yeah, it's still. I mean, it was a minimal raise last year. It wasn't to get us up to where we should be. So, I mean, this this right now would get us up on par for where the actual budget is based off the past five years. And then the $10,600 for technology for licenses and computer, and I think we talked a little bit about this last time with the software costs, the MEEK, the educational uh, group that we buy, all of our Microsoft software, uh, we validated that, yes, we will see a 5% increase in those areas for the next three years. So this gets into that requirement area because without these required increases in, or these increases in these areas, we will have to cut services. And we're already feeling a pinch because um, so in the other technology areas due to the cuts in the capital budget from last year. So we're really feeling a pinch with our technology plan. And uh, this would help out a little bit, keeping our software costs, at least the current software that we have, being able to be funded. Can we jump back to page six? Under health slash the AED replacements, how's that being taken care of? So I assume the AEDs are expired and that's why they've got to be replaced? Where's the top of the page? Oh, that's it. Under yeah. health. That's... What page? That's I'm sorry, more yeah, it's more so of instruction. Yeah, you, you were absorbing Not that one? About four down from the top. Oh, okay. Right. Health. AED replacements and yeah. mannequins. That we can't get that through our, a grant. That was an oversight on my part. We need that. Because out of yeah, because out of that line, well, I take that back. If if the if if the thirty six thousand and the ten is taken, if that's added into this budget. Out of the 42, I would be able to pick that up. The 11. It becomes the issue if the if the 30 if this if these requests are not funded, then the first has got to go to the consumables, and then that doesn't leave very much 
left an MOI. So as long as the 36 and the 10 are picked up, I would be able to absorb that. That's correct. It's the AED itself that has to be replaced, not the pads? Okay. Correct. Um, to go back, you had a question about um, English language learners that request for an additional um, teacher. Caseload um, 2019 data, we've got 325 students active, um, so that leaves us about 65 students per teacher. But what we also do is we still service students for two years after they, yes, after they've exited the program. So we add about five on per teacher, so 65 to 70 caseload per teacher with the five that we currently have. And that's a lot. That's a lot. Okay. So we were at... So we're down to the um, yeah. fixed charges, health insurance. I think we talked about that. That's not even a requirement. That's mandatory. Right. So. so we so have we, where to we start were at uh, 35, 3.5. We're now to 2.7. In case anybody was counting besides me. <laughs> so we've got to start having some conversations about um, how much farther you feel like you want to get this um, request down. Okay. If you know. So can I ask in in this? One thing I wanted to share, if I could. Um, so le last last week, the governor released his budget. Uh, we did get some preliminary state aid numbers. See, Mr. Smith over there shouting his pencil already. Maintenance of effort, round numbers, 1.5 million. From the state? No, maintenance of effort from the county, 1.5 million. At that. The state, 0.8 million. Gives you $2.3 million in new revenue. That's, I'll use the term, our floor. And Kerwin, it's five, it doesn't count on anything. Yeah, it doesn't so, go anywhere. so what this what this is is there were two things that are in our state aid, and one is our normal state aid funding, and then they parsed out two pieces of that supplemental pre K and declining enrollment grant, which we benefited a little bit from. They parsed these two. So what used to be for 20 years one document is now two. When we take those two documents and add them up together, that's where the 0.8 million comes from. What's not known is that $558,000 we've talked about in new Kerwin stuff for teacher supplies and CCR, I won't say CCD, CCR um, and college career readiness. That is money that's already in the budget. The governor just has to release those funds for that particular purpose to be used next year. And I haven't gotten any indication of where we are on that. So there could be an additional money, but that additional money, college and career readiness, and teacher materials so restricted. that's pretty much restricted as far as our unrestricted funding we're pretty much there at 2.3 million so we'll be asking for more than maintenance of effort from the county huh we would be that's understatement yeah. <laughs> what is our um, um, education effort amount this year uh, all of that 1.5 million with the exception of fifty thousand dollars okay I mean, if, if we... I don't, I don't necessarily... We talk about education effort, but when I talk maintenance of effort, that includes the education effort. If it wasn't for that education effort, we'd be getting $50,000 from the county as a maintenance of effort requirement. But because they're funding below the state numbers, there's a maximum of 2.5% that they have to increase our per-pupil allotment by, and that's how we got the additional $1.5 million. Mm -hmm. And if you had, to, you had to state at eight... And just let's be generous and say, Kerwin, we can use it all for what we want to, which we can't. We're still halfway there, from what I see. I don't even include Kerwin in the, in the mix. Well, Kerwin's I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to be nice. Just over here. I'm looking at the best case scenario, with 5.3, when I add up some of these numbers. Well, I just had 2.7 in just the non-school and the school-based requests. Yeah, and then they had 2.5 for wages. And then, you, and then yes. We were five. Yes, yeah, so we are. At that point, mm -hmm. with only 2.3 in new A school coming. based. I didn't get a school based. So, just one. so that's the green one. Yeah, the, the green one and the blue out. one. I didn't get that. Okay, we had it last time. I, I was just, I'm just trying to do apples to apples here. Sorry. So I'm not a budget person. Dick, you might have to brace yourself for this, but. <laughs> My thought is you go in and ask for what you need, and they, they certainly see your justification here. 
Oh, yeah. Before we start cutting and slashing things our kids need. I mean, that just... So, so I agree. Um, because we've done some level of cuts here. Um, we certainly, you know, are entertaining any other cuts, you know, to what we've proposed and what we've, since we pared down again and got about 300000 off of what we had last week. Um, let's bring that forward now so that we can think, because what we do is we still start paring back in the event that we don't get what we ask for, um, because we just have to be prepared. Yeah. And of course, the last choice is to cut positions, because all of our positions have people in them. We don't have any, you know, That's positions true. that we're not, um, you know, paying dollars out of. The only exception to that is the communications one, and we're still paying out of that. Here's um, so Can we. I ask we this? In this budget here, Mr. Fisher, this entire budget here, have, we have not gone through this budget that you first okay, gave us to do any cuts. Correct. The only cu cuts that you have given us are been in the request. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the well, extra yeah, request. I mean, yes. So we have not gone through this yet to do any cuts back to no, say. We gave you some suggestions on re on cuts that we made or reallocations. Okay. But you're, you are correct. We have not gone through that to look for any additional uh, funding. So our, our homework, ladies and gents, is to go through this, look at the historical um, numbers, and see what we can and cannot live with, knowing that this is on the table, and knowing that we're only getting 2.3 in new aid. No, I, don't, I don't want to cut positions. I, we, we need everyone. And, and, and if I could just add to that, just keep in mind when you're looking at that, 86% of that is salaries. salaries. Yes. Then we have the utilities and bus transportation. So yes. it leaves Increase in insurance very is. little. And yes, we could get rid of all meetings and conferences and we could get rid of some of those things, but you're to address a two or three million dollar oh, yeah, deficit, you're not going to necessarily find it in there unless you start looking at positions. Just honest facts. Well, I, you know, I, I, I see the way you're looking because, you know, you're, you're, of course, definitely you're charged with to do what's right for the system. Um, and a couple of things I said, like the financial person, put that on thin ice. In other words, it might go down. I have a the nurse thing. I'm not saying we have to have it, but do we have it or does the health department have it? There's some issues there, which, you know, we either stays in our budget or doesn't. Have we looked at everything that we've done in the past that is it's good and we'd like to have it, but maybe something new we can maybe save something back there and we, that and you, you'd have the history and us that more than any of us board members sure. and we did okay. and that's what we did when we went line by line on through, that. not just through that but through this book okay and so there were some notes in there where we combined some we cut some because we had we looked at the trend and if we weren't actually spending what was allocated we cut that most times and not we just move that to some area within that category that runs over um, based on trend data, so we were pretty much cut, uh, broke even there. But we did go through that line by line, and and you'll see some of that um, in that document. Because what I mean, what I'd like to do, and know what what's going to happen. I'm going to I'm assuming we won't get everything we would like. Yeah. But instead of just cutting what we this current additional expenditures, look back in a year or two and say, is there something in there that maybe this is more valuable than this? They're all valuable, but you know, and have your team look at that. And that's what I'm point. saying that we did. We I know, went well, right, through, yeah, we're we going to have to do it again because I think we're we, there's a large gap here that I don't think is going to be complete. Yeah, I, I challenge you to look through that. And well, I'm just asking, something that's I, not people. I'll look through we it, but did. I'm also asking you know. And we did. And I just wanted to put that to ease ease for you. We absolutely did, and we found, like I said, we found some areas that we historically had not spent all that was allocated in that area so we cut that area if we found an area which you know we did that we consistently overspend if it was within that category we move those funds to that area so there are no people that I can see us cutting um, like we said as 86 percent of the budget so we are not recommending cutting any of the positions I mean let's face it we're asking for positions so uh, but if it comes to that that's some hard decisions that we, we may have to make I certainly hope that we don't have to go there but um, we're gonna be hard-pressed to do that because we are gonna be 
cutting in the classrooms for that. Well, I mean, I don't want to cut in the classrooms. I want to keep the people in there. Mm -hmm. But the programs we have there, are they being utilized as well as they sh could be, or is there something new? Like I said earlier, law of diminishing return, it was great when it started, and mm -hmm. we're still getting rewards from it, but there might be something else we can get higher rewards for our bang for our buck. We don't, honestly, we don't have a lot of programs. We don't, we don't have a lot of that. Mm -hmm. uh, we offer the courses that are required for the most part. Um, we don't have a lot of offerings for electives. We have, for example, French and Spanish. We have art music. I mean, we don't have a bunch of programs. We just don't. Even with our Project Lead the Way that we talked about the other day, now that's part of uh, accountability. So we get credits for our um, well exactly well-rounded education, computational learning for that. So that's not even something that we'd uh, be able to cut. We don't have a lot of programs. We don't have fluff. Well, but it's like, it's Mr. like in Mr. these Smith, grants. We're talking about not giving a late bus. We have to cut a late bus. I mean, this is, we're down to the nitty gritty. We even talked about years ago getting rid of the sports programs at eight hundred thousand dollars. Do you remember that conversation? Well, that could break out. And there was a year that students yeah. paid. <laughs> and there was a year that we had pay to play, and that only brought in a hundred thousand dollars. It didn't do. I mean, it was a drop in the bucket. It so a hundred thousand dollars. And it excluded students who couldn't pay. And that yeah. yeah. And that's, but but, but what yeah, I see in here, we had stuff. grants that are expiring this year that we're having to pick up. You know, and that's yeah. and that's a program you want to keep and do that. But you know, okay, we didn't have it at one time. A grant came, we decided it's a great idea, can we still afford that? And that's just things I'm looking at because, you know, I don't want to lose people. I'd like to have more people. And I mean, I, you know, the teachers are what hits the road. You and know? that particular grant is supporting our core reading program. So we have to teach reading. We have to teach English at middle and high school. We don't have a choice about that. K to 12. Mm -hmm. We got a lot to look at. Yeah. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, any other questions? Anybody else? So I want to make two. Mm -hmm. sure, I want to make a suggestion. So last time we met, we talked about you know we're going to have to make some hard decision. And again, we went back through and we cut some about three hundred thousand. So you know we really are looking to you for and I appreciate the the tough questions you have to ask those questions because that gets us down to a number that's palatable for you uh, as our request, right? But I also want to let you know that um, you know we did go through this and and we're coming up on a place where I think that. I'm going to go ahead and say to the commissioners, we're going to do our budget presentation in March. I don't see us as ready in February because, remember, our plan is to share with you information about the capital budget um, the next time we meet for a budget uh, workshop. And that so is... we still, because those include school requests. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Pender's done a great job of going through and pulling out school requests and adding them to um, a central office, you know, requests so that we can um, take a hard, hard look at what schools are asking for. We sort of categorize the things that we asked for last year but were cut, and now those things have not disappeared. So we've really begun to take a close look at the requests that we're going to have, and we're going to go through that with you again the next time we meet. So we've got a couple of big jobs. We've got to think about out um, what further we can live without, you know, and of course it's it's uh, it's really about what's going to cause less pain, one thing than another, because it's all going to be painful, and so it's tough decisions that we're going to have to make. But we're not done. We still have that capital, and then March is going to be upon us, and we're going to need to get our request. Um, I'm going to present it to you for your approval, and then we're going to have to get in front of the um, commissioners, the county commissioners. So in that vein, um, we have February 12th as a tentative session. Will we need February 12th and 19th for work sessions? I mean, I well, I, just, night, yeah. I okay. think that we do, but I, I want to make sure that every need to have consensus on this. Pretty sure. Well, are you going to make one of these up? Is that the plan? That's the plan. Once we get okay. it a little Arrow. bit more right. narrowed. Right. Yes. Okay. So in the meantime, we can still send questions to you and and comments and and work on that. So February 12th, we'll talk about the capital. Is that it that we, we can, take all we of can, that time? We can make that plan. Mm -hmm. And then February 19th, revisit the entire budget request before your budget presentation on March 4th. Does, is that is that sound like a plan? The 12th, and I've said earlier, the 19th, 
I'll be out of out of the area. That's that okay. Day. That's okay. <laughs> Probably better for everybody. But uh, <laughs> what I can do is be in touch with you or That's Dr. Fine. Kane. Make That's fine. That's <laughs> fine. We'll well, and you know what? Quickly. It'll all be an open session, so you Understood. can watch I, the video. I can call and it. Right. I can, I'm I can. sure that you're going to be texting me the whole time and telling me what to ask. But, but what I'll see is, as, as we go through this, we'll all get it and look at it. Um, yes. And then we're also putting in our school-based position requests. It's like 13, 12.98, but I'm going to say 13 for 500 and some thousand, 513,000. That's in there. It is. Okay. okay. Board decides to make some reductions there. Well, I mean, it's some. We there are additional employees. It might have to at one time. But I'm, of all the things I complain about money, I think having teachers in the classrooms can't hurt. So let, let me just so you know February um, 12th and February 19th adding to our list. Yeah. To be here. And we had them on mind. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on the 19th, it'll just be the three uh, ladies. Um, and Mr. We'll Smith, keep in with regard to what you were just saying, we have teachers in the classroom. <laughs> Recognize that these are additional Understand. teachers that we're asking for. And, I, and, you know, we touched on this a little bit last week or the last time we met or the time before that. Some requests don't even make it to us because schools feel like, why go through all of that if it's going to get cut? But quite frankly, the new requests versus current sitting employees being cut that's something you have to think about. Well, I mean, I'm certainly sure the new ones would be, the ones we question would be cut before any current ones, and that would never first hopefully happen right. first round. But I understand the frustration. I know I think one or two schools probably have asked for so many times at some point, not they don't, but you just get to the point where Absolutely. why ask again? Absolutely. You know? That goes for operating and capital. And, I, and we frankly. have a good staff, we have good teachers yeah. in our system, and we, mm -hmm. you know, it just seems to be more put on us, but at some point it's a, you know, it's a dollar and cents thing. And so when it gets to this point in the conversation, we have to make a decision. What, what can we live with to ask for as a request? You've got to start to get a dollar amount in your head. Or you're going to say, okay, these are our needs. Let's present all our needs. We, we've, got to, we've got to figure out the direction. And our time's getting short. So we really have to start getting um, mm -hmm. to the marrow. I apologize. I'm sorry. Dead air time. I apologize. But were there any other questions that we could um, respond okay. to while okay. we do so that? Okay, so we'll leave it there. We'll leave it at that. We'll, we'll, we'll get the answers to you ASAP, you know, when you put them on that you list. Got, I mean, you, you told us what we need to hear. Okay. <laughs> Some of us don't want to hear it. But. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if no other questions and we're all on the same page about our meetings for the next month we're all good we need to go into executive closed session do i have a motion to do so i move to pursue to the general provisions of article 3-305 and 3-104 of the board of education of queen Anne's county meet in closed sessions to consider matters that are related to negotiations to discuss the performance evaluation appointees employees or officials over whom this body has jurisdiction and to perform the administrative function to consult with staff and other individuals about pending or potential litigation I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, motion is second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to go in executive closed session. All in favor say aye. 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 Yes. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Motion is carried. We will close in closed session. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Mm -hmm.